We have a palette and perfumes video today featuring Bella Butte Bar's Poison Garden and Poison Cherry. Hello, my gorgeous ones. Welcome to Alicia Budget Beauty. My name is Alicia. Here on my channel, I love all things affordable fashion, beauty, and fragrance. I do hauls, tutorials, reviews, perfume, and palette videos, all sorts of fun stuff. So if that sounds good to you, please subscribe, stick around, be a friend. Okay, you guys, I actually did a video like this a while back, and I meant to do more of them. You guys seem to really enjoy the last one. Um, that last one was the DD Signature Ultimate Cappuccino Palette, and then I also shared some coffee fragrances with you. And I planned on doing more of these type of videos, and I don't know what happened. It just, for whatever reason, I, I didn't do it. But I thought this would be really fun because we have a brand new fragrance by an indie brand, and that is Bella Butte Bar. And actually, this palette here is my first palette by them. I purchased it myself, and I've been wanting to try their formula for so long, literally for years, since the Strange and Unusual palette. Um, then they got a new formula, so I didn't wanna buy a palette with the old formula. Then they re-released it, but then this beauty came out and I was like, this is my one, this is my first one. But then they also came out with a fragrance and it happened to be a cherry fragrance. So I thought, let me go ahead and feature all of my cherry fragrances with you guys. I have 12, 12 others besides this one. And then I will actually talk about the palette at the end of the video. So. This is how I'm choosing to structure it. I don't know if it's the right way or not. I have a lot of fragrance people here that I don't know if they care as much about the makeup and vice versa. So if you care nothing about fragrance, you only wanna hear my thoughts about Poison Garden, you can feel free to go to the very end. And then if you are a fragrance person and you don't care about the makeup, you can stop at the end of my 13 cherry fragrances. So let's go ahead and get into, let's start with Poison Cherry. All right, so in case you are a fragrance person and you know nothing about indie makeup, you've never heard of Bella Butte Bar, they are an indie brand who specializes in eyeshadow palettes and they have launched their very first fragrance. So I got really excited because I'm an indie shadow lover and I think it's cool that they're dabbling into fragrance. Um, I do have like maybe like a little bit of constructive criticism to give um, just in the future for any indie brand that wants to get into fragrances, but I'll save that here for a minute. I'm just gonna be as you know honest and objective about this fragrance as possible as if I'm not a like beauty lover as well. So, all right, Poison Cherry. First of all, love the black bottle. I really love the little skull cherries here. I think that's super cool. Um, you know, it's kind of stark and medicinal looking, which goes along with the Poison Cherry vibe. So the notes in this are exotic black cherry liqueur, almond, tonka bean, Turkish rose, jasmine, sandbok. So I had a feeling, I had a feeling I was like, this is probably going to be a Tom Ford Lost Cherry inspired fragrance. Um, if you saw a previous video that I did, I featured a fragrance where I talked about that. And actually I had that inspo wrong. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but I did bring up that there are so many Lost Cherry dupes out there and that I'm, I'm so, 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 so tired of them. However, even though this is a pretty much Lost Cherry dupe, I'm gonna judge this just based off as, as if I don't have a bunch of them. And you know, this is my first time smelling the fragrance. Okay, we're gonna start with that. This is really, really pretty. Um, you do get sort of that liqueur out of the cherry. It is a dark cherry, not like a bean cherry. It's, this one doesn't quite go super far into the Luden's area, Luden's cherry cough drop, but like, almost it's almost there i can smell the tonka and everything jasmine or the rose sorry and it's lovely if you have never smelled lost cherry if you don't have any other dupes let's say this is what i think this is perfect for let's say you are an indie makeup lover and you've never really taken a step into fragrance or if you have, you've only done like run-of-the-mill designer. We'll just say like a few Lancomes, like 
you know, maybe a Chanel in there and you've never smelled the Tom Ford, I think this would be super cool. I think they'd probably be mind blown, you know, like, oh my gosh, I've never smelled anything like this before. And I do think there is like a little place for that in the indie world, you know, presenting a real expensive fragrance that not everyone's gotten their nose on and providing it at a better cost. This is $55. Um, there's always a code to use, like someone's affiliate code. So I did get this 10% off. So really this was about 50 bucks for a 50 mil. So I think it's lovely. It is pretty strong as well. It projects well. Um, so the only thing that I'm gonna say that's kind of just giving a little bit of like a critique to it, just to be honest and real, I would love to see, if indie brands are going to get into fragrance, I would love to see them come up with their own. Like I, I just, you know, get creative, um, get your nose on a bunch of notes and samples, like maybe go to like courses that they provide and stuff and just take that creativity that is in indie makeup, like indie palettes are so, well, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them are, you know, real imaginative color story wise and artwork and, and how they present them and the theme and the marketing of it all. I would take that creativity and come up with your own scent because I personally would be so excited to purchase fragrances from a beloved indie brand with an eyeshadow formula that I love, but like it's nothing I've smelled before. That would get me more excited than an inspired by, especially one that's been done so much before. However, again, if someone is not familiar with fragrance and they're just in the makeup world and their favorite indie brand comes out with this fragrance, I think it would be very exciting for them. So maybe I'd like to see a mix of both. If there's gonna be inspired buys, I would like to see some new fresh ideas and fragrance. So that is my little review of this. I do think that it is a worthy inspired by fragrance though. So that is Poison Cherry by Bella Butte Bar. All right, this next one is Cherry Baby by Sabrina Carpenter. I do have a video just dedicated to this. And honestly, I'm just now coming back to visit this. I have not really worn it since I did that video. In that video, I gave it a little critique kind of same thing where I was hoping this would be really, really different and it wasn't different enough for me at the time, you know, to get too excited about it. I think it has set a while and gotten, it's changed a little. It still has those same sort of vibes to it that it did before. Another kind of, well, it's not too different from Tom Ford Lost Cherry. This is supposed to have cacao and um, more going on in it. I think like patchouli in the base and stuff, but smelling it right now compared to the other, there is a, there is a difference between this one and um, the Poison Cherry. I don't know if I'm smelling a little, you know what I think I'm smelling more with this now? I don't necessarily smell chocolate. Like I'm not gonna say, oh, this is a chocolate fragrance, but I smell maybe like a chocolate covered cherry, very subtle on the chocolate. There's something candied and different than the first one. The first one has that liqueur, cherry liqueur kind of vibe with a tonka bean. So it's a little bit more like fluffy. This is a little more candied and a little denser. And I think I like this better now than I did in the beginning. So I don't know if this one's changed or just really smelling them side by side. I'm smelling differences in this one, but I think I like this one a lot better than I used to. Okay, well that's a fun surprise. That can happen with fragrance. So again, if you've never tried a cherry, if you're a fan of Sabrina Carpenter, I think this would be a good one to try. And this one's a little bit more, I don't know, like I think if you have something chocolate that stands out to layer with this, you might bring up more chocolate in this. So that would be my advice with this. That is the Sabrina Carpenter Cherry Baby. Now, this one is an indie brand um, that I recently started dabbling into. This, this one is the Talia Ferro, um, that's the brand, perfume brand, and this is Room 29. 
This is very different than the other two. This is straight up cherry bubble gum. It is a tart, um, sort of sour puckering in your mouth cherry powder on on a on a wrapper of the bubble gum and i actually really really like it i do not think this is for everyone but it's so different it's and it's also kind of like a like a cherry kool-aid powder um not even necessarily cherry kool-aid once you've added the water and you've thinned it out like the straight up like smell it straight out of the bag the, the packet cherry kool-aid maybe even the i think wasn't there like a sour cherry one that's kind of what i get out of this and i've layered this and i really really enjoy it i think i wore this on fourth of july i think and i think i did layer it with something but i i think this one is really fun i really like the bottles i think they're nice and sleek i have a couple of other fragrances of his and they're very unique fragrances. And he thinks of a lot of details whenever he ships as well. So it's also a black owned business. And I know that some people really look for black owned perfumers like they do makeup brands. So that's another bonus. And yeah, if you, I mean, if like sour cherry bubblegum powder sounds good to you, then you would probably like this one. All right, this is Ruby Avery, and this is the Aroma Concepts. I have a video where I reviewed this before as well. This is not straight up cherry, but there is a cherry note in the top, along with apple, and there's florals going on in here, and some like woody base to this. So I, I wouldn't I say would. that right when you spray this, you're like, oh, cherry, it's a cherry fragrance, but it's there. It's helping develop the rest of the notes in here and the profile of like a fruity, floral, woody date night fragrance is what this is. And I've grown to really, really, really like this fragrance. Now, this one, obviously, this is Mimic. Mimic is a brand that, as the name would denote, they mimic other fragrances. So this is a Tom Ford Lost Cherry dupe. Um, this one is number 79 so it's a blend of cherry vanilla wood it says now let me just spray this sucker and this was one of my first um lost the sprayer is not atomizer is not working well there is more of a vanilla element to this one it smells a little similar to the first fragrance with some vanilla added It's not a spot on dupe of Lost Cherry. So at least there's a little hint of something different, but from far away, someone's probably gonna think that it might be Lost Cherry. This one kind of reminds me of a cherry car freshener that you hang in your car, like a cherry vanilla. Is that a good thing? I don't know. This isn't my favorite one, um, but if you don't like that liqueur, note that is in um, like the first one that I showed. I don't get a liqueur out of this one. It's straight up like a cherry vanilla car freshener. You might like it. You might like it. All right. Now let's go on to this one that I already did the video here just recently. The Ophidian Black Cherry by Paris Corner. And I was a dum-dum and I thought this was a Lost Cherry inspired fragrance. Apparently, and I try not to watch reviews before I get new ones like this so that I'd just have my own opinions. And I thought that's what it was trying to do. What it was actually trying to do is the Kaoli um, Love Fest Burning Cherry because this one is burning cherry, raspberry, praline, palo santo, guayacwood, and patchouli. Now, I don't think patchouli is listed in this one. If it is and I'm mistaken, I'm sorry. But I think that might be the only difference here. And so this is obviously, by reading the notes, this is trying to dupe this one. But I don't think that it's a dupe of it. I mean, it's trying to, but it is a little different and maybe it's because it doesn't have that patchouli. In the KLE Love Fest Burning Cherry, I get very much a incense cherry pie. In this one, I get a cherry woods. So I like them both. I love them both actually. And I think that they're different enough that you could have both. And 
I, I mean, I love both the bottles too. It just kind of depends on what vibe you want to go for. If you want more of that sort of Thanksgiving, there's like an incense burner and like a cherry pie and you love KLE, then go for the original. If you're like, eh, not so much into the incense-y, I like more of like a woody base, then I would go with the Ophidian Black Cherry. So my bad, it's not trying to be Tom Ford, but it's really its own thing, I think. All right, now next is the Cherry Hookah by Dua. I talked about this not that long ago in my fragrances. I can't wait to wear this fall video. And I'm not gonna go too much into it because a lot of you have probably already seen that video. But this is one of my favorites and it's so different from all of the rest. This is a Cherry Hookah. I mean, that's what it's called, but it literally smells like a Cherry Hookah. It has like this smokiness that isn't like a nicotine induced smoke. It's that billowy hookah type of smoke. So it's kind of like fluffy in the air, um, but kind of exotic at the same time with the, the cherry and the fruits, because there's red fruits, I believe, and cherry as well. So maybe the red fruits is also like raspberry, but cherry is definitely the dominant one here. This one is so good. It's it, I, if I did, I didn't rank these, but it would definitely be towards the top. Such a neat one if you're like, well, I want another cherry, but I don't want the Lost Ford vibes, or I don't want the KLE Love Fest burning cherry vibes. This is it. I I love this one. Okay, now this is another one that doesn't scream cherry necessarily, but this is Sweet and by Lolita Limpica. You can get it really discounted on like fragrance net and places like that. This is just a candied, sugary, sweet balm. And the cherry is kind of muddled in there. It's sort of like a confectiony, sugary thing going on with some indis not indescript, nondescript fruits. Well, the actual note really is cherry on the top of this. So this one I have to be in the mood for. I have to really want something sweet. I also think this is a good one to have to layer in. So if one of these is not sweet enough for you, like say the Love Fest Burning Cherry, you're, you want something sugary, but you don't want to add like a vanilla sugar or a you know cotton candy sugar, this would go really well with that just to sweeten it up since it does have the cherry note on at the top. Okay, this is another one that sadly, you guys, this brand disappeared. I'm talking off the face of the earth, but I have it, so I thought I'd talk about it. Not that you can get it, so I won't spend too long, but this was Janice Fragrances NYX. This was a Tom Ford Lost Cherry dupe, and um, this was a really good one. I thought this one was excellent. It has like a little bit more substance going on in it. There's something that smells slightly different and really sophisticated. Um, this this brand, they, they gifted this to me. Um, a couple of fragrances, they kind of wanted to go further and do more, more stuff together, collabing, and then their Instagram, their TikTok, and their website disappeared. I might have to do with being a dupe house. I know they have to be really careful about that. So unfortunately I can't recommend it, but I own it. So, and it just gave me a chance to talk about brands disappearing. All right, this next one is Tarte Deco by Sniff. Now I have a ranking video um, with Sniff fragrances and this was, I think my last one. And I like it. It's, I, I really, really like my Sniff fragrances. So just cause it's last doesn't mean I don't like it. This is though, was ranked at the bottom because I've always felt like this is missing something. This is a cherry pie filling type of fragrance with some sandalwood in the base. That's really all I get from it. It's different enough from the rest though. There's almost this buttery quality to it as well. I found that with a lot of sniff fragrances. There's just kind of this, I don't know how to describe it any other way, but like a buttery essence to it. But this one, I've always thought it needs like cinnamon or um, some sort of oud, saffron, something to just kind of spice things up. So this is a good, like if you don't like any of those others, you know, if you don't like the liqueur, um, if you don't like the incense, if you don't like the woods, then this is a straight up kind of cherry pie filling with a little bit of sandalwood. Okay, our very, no, this isn't the last one. I've got another one back here. Okay, 
So let me go ahead and go with this one. This is a sample that my sweet friend Kelly sent to me from um, Room 1015. This is Cherry Punk. And I do actually like this one a lot. Um, this is an edgy cherry fragrance. This is Lost Cherry with some leather. It's not as different as I thought it was gonna be when I got my nose on this. I was like, oh, I like it, but it's basically like all the others with some leather. So I do like it though. It's a little bit sexy, a little bit messy, a little bit dangerous smelling. I think this is for more of my niche people, people who uh, are sick of all the same, same thing, or they, they just want that like little something like dark to their fragrances or they like it, they already know they like a leather note, then I would really recommend this. I've toyed with getting a full size because I do really, really enjoy it. It's one that I was waiting for it to get cooler so I can wear it and see if it really comes alive in the colder weather because I think with leather it would. And if I end up liking it enough, I probably will get a full size of Cherry Punk. And the last one here is Ruby Rush by my Paris Hilton. <laughs> you guys, this is an underrated fragrance. I say underrated, but the people that know it love this fragrance. And it is different from all the other ones. This is the most girly out of all of them. It is like a cherry cream soda almost, like a, a true cherry vanilla vibes that has some sophistication to it. I think, I mean, this one's way more sophisticated than this one. This is just a sugary cherry balm, uh, not so much, like a, a sugar balm with some sort of cherry in it. This is smooth, it's feminine, it is so pretty. It is not the most long lasting, I get maybe three hours wear out of this, but I love her bottles so much. This is such a beautiful layering one as well. I think it's absolutely worth it to get it. I, I personally think Paris Hilton's fragrances are underrated. So excited about her new one. So um, that is Ruby Rush. All right, so that's the end of the fragrances. So if you only came here for fragrance, thank you so much for being here. Love you, bye. If you fast forwarded or if you are staying for the Poison Garden, I'm actually gonna be real quick. I have used this four times. I'm gonna pop my looks in over here. I do have it on my eyes today. This is the like dark, mysterious, kind of smoky eye look, but I have fallen in love. I totally get it. It was worth the wait for me. I really held out and waited for the color story that truly spoke to me. I think it, I think it's, it's, it's moody, it's grungy, it's sexy. It can be kind of brighter as well, you know, and like warm toned in here. Um, but then you can go really, really deep and smoky like I really enjoy doing. The special shades in here are special. And there's a lot of dark bases to the shimmers, which I think adds a lot of depth and just something different. It's, it make, helps me skip a step, whereas if I would have put a black base down, to change things up. It's already there for me. Um, did I get them all? Well, here's some right here. Let's just, okay, let me just put it on my hand. I don't even know. I'm not really going in order here. If you guys are new, I do better videos than this for my shadows, but this is a different type of video, mainly fragrance. But here we go, you guys. It is just, so stunning. There are so many shifts and the black base just really makes sparkles pop. I'm so impressed. I, I love the mattes. I mean, the shimmers, the special shades are the star of the show to me. Some of the mattes I felt like were a little bit better than others. I was wondering if it was the brushes I was using. Um, the packing method seems to work better for pigment. If I was just went in blending, I kind of felt like I had to really like work at it. Once I started doing packing, then blending, that helped a lot, which that's not a big deal. I do that with some of my other formulas, but I'm, like I said, I'm very, very impressed. I'm sold, like my looks were, I just, I love them. I just, I had so much fun just looking at the different shifts and I didn't even know some were gonna be shifty like that until I really had them on the eyes. And I, I mean, it is a more expensive palette, 
I just think if I'm holding out and waiting for the ones that I want, this is the type of formula that I want to go for. And I, I will, I'm a fan and I will be purchasing here on out. Like I said, I have more extensive videos where I, I typically review palettes where I'll do looks on camera and everything, but this is just how I chose to do this one. It's just like a little wrap up at the end. My people who do trust my opinions on palettes, you guys know I'm always honest. Even if I get something in PR, I will tell you guys it's not great. I did not get this in PR. I purchased this myself and I love it. I love, love, love Poison Garden. And then the fragrance is sort of like a, I can't even really give it like a score. I guess if I had never smelled anything like it before, I probably would give it like an, that was my pug. I'm gonna leave this in because it's crazy and it's funny. Um, I give it an eight. I think I give it an eight. Because I've smelled that it before, it wasn't that exciting for me, but I am excited to see what other fragrances she may put out. And like I said, it just, ooh, come up with your own. It will be super, super exciting, and I will be first in line to purchase it. That is it, you guys. That oh, Those are my 13 cherry fragrances and my little quick review of Bella Butte Bar's Poison Garden and Poison Cherry. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have fun shopping, budget shopping. Bye.